we're going to switch over to Extraction 2.0 and have a look at what those templates look like. Again, I do want to reiterate that we are not recommending Extraction 2.0 to be used for Cochrane reviews right now. Um, but because in the future it will be, I thought it would be helpful to have a look and start to get a feel of how the interface works. Okay, so I've switched over to a different review now. And what we're looking at is the data extraction template uh, builder in Extraction 2.0. So again, that first big standout difference is that templating is now its own step in Extraction 2.0. Uh, this is not linked to any specific study, and I do have to actually publish my template in order to start using it. You are not able to access an extraction form until you have published your template. So that's the first thing to know. Uh, as I said, this is a bit more suited for qualitative information. Um, so the particular reason for that is really it comes down to because there are no outcome tables yet in Extraction 2.0. They are working on them. Um, we're really looking at how to, to optimize how, how it's collected so that we, you know, in the interest of maybe future automation, which aligns quite well with my research interests, um, that we collect that information um, in the form itself so that it just sets us up well for the future uh, to be able to use data sets better. Uh, but in the meantime, really all of this is only qualitative. The closest that we come to quantitative anything is uh, this ability to have radio buttons in the extraction form, which we got lots and lots of requests for, especially as it relates to quality assessment actually. Uh, so with this template builder, I can set up what I want my headings to be. I can have subheadings as well. So these green ones are each sub, or rather those are, those are text boxes actually, <laughs> um, rather than subheadings, but you can have subheadings. There we go, here's a subheading, that light blue, uh, as well as single choice options. So that's what, what I referred to before as radio buttons. So a list of things where you can only select one of them as you can see in this preview panel on the right. My favorite part, it's a little thing, but it does make a big difference, is the ability to click and drag. So if I've set something up in the wrong order, if I've realized, ooh, I actually want this to be under my methods section, I can just click and drag it down there. Uh, to delete something, I simply delete the text under the heading itself and click backspace. So it's a much more keyboard-based setup, uh, which we find tends to just be easier on the user. It's a lot quicker, um, a lot more intuitive. Uh, for example, to add an option to uh, this method single choice question, I just click enter and add in a new choice option. So really apart from those radio buttons, the only things that you add are essentially text boxes. So like I said, it's very, very qualitative in nature, um, but it's it's got the basis of a more powerful tool. Uh, so once I am ready for that to be used, I would click publish. I do have um, eight in progress studies. So this does publish over um, studies that have already started extraction. So it's a big departure from extraction 1.0. So in this case, if you've realized you need to change your template, uh, you can overwrite the existing template and push those updates, even if something is already in progress, which can be extremely helpful. Next, we'll have a look at the quality assessment template builder in extraction 2.0. Um, and this is going to circle back around to risk of bias too, uh, in case if anybody is already wondering about that. Um, so again, we have that click and drag option and really the, the big improvement in my opinion of extraction 2.0 versus extraction 1.0 when it comes to quality assessment is the ability to customize these answers. So of course this is set up as a Cochrane risk of bias form but let's say that I wanted to set something up as uh, a, different, a different study template. Um, I would add that domain, 
and I can have uh, numerical judgments if I wanted. That's a pretty common question we get. Um, so I might have yes, maybe yes. Now I'm just copying the risk of bias too because that's the most recent thing I was looking at. And maybe not. So really the, the point that I want to drive home there is that these risk of bias options are now fully customizable. They do not have to be yes, or rather high, low, and unclear as they were in extraction 2.0, in extraction 1.0, excuse me. So now moving across to what this might look like. Um, so when I'm not building the form, but rather when I'm ready to actually extract. Um, very similar setup to having the PDF on the left and the extraction form on the right. And now I can actually type into these text boxes, whereas in the preview pane, I couldn't. It's also far more agile to switch between quality assessment and data extraction. Um, from a technical point of view, that's because these are now considered the same form, even though they have independent templates. Um, so it's, yeah, you can see how quickly it just goes between those two forms. Uh, something that the tech team is working on is making an intuitive way for teams to split up who's doing data extraction, and who's doing quality assessment, if they are having two separate people perform that step. Um, so that's something that's in progress as well. 